Hello and welcome back. Okay, so on my CPU build, I've got a few problems at the moment. Now, when it comes to digital problems, I've been able to troubleshoot my way through several of those quite well, but I think the issues I'm experiencing at the moment are analog in nature and I've got a lot less experience there. So I asked advice of people who know a lot more about this kind of stuff. So I asked Sion, the unexpected maker, and he said, Hey James, I've been watching you trying to sleuth out what's going wrong with your CPU and I feel your pain every time I think you, you've got it, you found it. It's not quite it. So I really suggest you get yourself an oscilloscope. And then I asked David Watts and he said, Hey Google, send a message to James. Tell him he needs to get an oscilloscope. Sorry, I can't send messages yet. Bloody useless thing. And so I thought for a while and thought, you know what? I should get an oscilloscope. Let's take a look. Looks like the box gets approval as well. Okay, certainly looks quite nice. Got a European style power cable, USB, and an adapter plug. I should be able to find a uh, regular power cable with a British plug on the end. Test leads. Two of those. Not sure what these bag of bits are for. I've got a vague memory of using an oscilloscope in a science lesson at school, but that was many, many years ago. So this isn't going to be a review of this device from a perspective of how well it stands up against other oscilloscopes, because my experience is too little. But what this should give you is an idea of what it's like to get a scope like this when you've got next to no experience. I'm going to try and fire this up and, uh, and do something with it. Now, I don't want to spend ages reading this. I do want to check there's nothing I'm supposed to do before I turn it on. Okay, so I've bought myself a Siglent SDS 1202X E. It's cost me just over 350 pounds. It's 200 megahertz and it's two channels. So one thing I was slightly concerned about was the serial number because I had read a report online that the, the very first versions of these with a serial number starting in BA had a minor issue and there's a few uh, videos around of people fixing that issue if you happen to have one of those. I'll put a link in the description. All right, give me a second while I check that there's nothing critical I need to do before I power it on. It's a calibration certificate. I will try and work out a better way of getting the uh, output to a point where it's visible. Whilst I haven't used an oscilloscope, at least not a digital one and not since school, I've obviously seen them being used quite a bit, so I'm hoping that gives me a good grounding. This is supposed to be showing a square wave.
Well, I've actually got a square wave now. This switch is labelled one times and ten times, which I think is input signal amplification. I think this is doing the right thing. So this is what a nice clean square wave looks like and when I start probing out my logic boards I'm kind of expecting that we're going to see some signals that don't look quite as sharp as that. Now I'm going to have to experiment around with this and get an understanding of it before I can do much. but. Let's see if I can uh, probe out one of my circuits and, and get some interesting response from it. So this is my trusty NES controller. So I've got a video series where I made this and also a video where I made this board for reading its results back. Now the way this circuit works is there's a, a clock and we've got a counter here that generates a latch every eight cycles and then um, a shift register for pulling the data in and you've basically got the reverse over here. So we've got a parallel to serial shift register, a serial to parallel shift register and then some gates to uh, tie it all together. All right, let's see if we can take a look at the clock. Right, so we've got a square wave, and our duty cycle isn't quite 50-50. And I've got a little bit of a spike off the top here. Just definitely being affected by that. I'll need to do some more experimentation later and uh, see what I have to do to get rid of those spikes. This clock circuit is very much based off the same one as I use in the CPU build and so I've almost certainly got the same spike there. Right, so this is one volt per division. So I've got just over four volt difference. I believe that is my latch line. And that is data. Ah, uh, that's not latch, that's that's data I've stuck that on. Is that one the latch? That's what I was expecting. So the yellow trace here goes high one in every eight clock cycles. And then if I move the second probe over to the data line, it's all high because it's an active load. And there we go. Different spots on the trace changing for each of the possible buttons on the controller. That's really cool. Now the crucial thing to realize here is that the general layout of this signal is exactly what I was expecting. So that's the first bit, second bit, third, fourth, now I can never remember which way around these go. There you go, I managed it in order. But the crucial difference is you know, sketching out these diagrams on bits of paper and stuff to work out how the circuit's going to work. All of these are nice, perfect square shapes which alternate between ground and 5 volts. And that's obviously not what we're seeing here. 
and it's the differences that are crucial. So we've got these tiny little variations on the line when the clock signal is going off. And in the case of this circuit, I don't know what's causing that, but I imagine there's a lack of decent decoupling and all of this kind of stuff. Getting a tiny little offset by uh, a cycle here. I don't know at this point whether or not that's the oscilloscope not quite tracking the latch line correctly or if my circuit doesn't always count perfectly to generate the latch line. That would be an interesting one to uh, probe out. I'm quite enjoying messing around with this. It's quite interesting to see the way the different signals affect one another. If I push the right button, which is associated with the data line dropping at this point, we see this little spike up on the latch line. And none of this is affecting the working of the circuit but I can see how effects like this compounding out over a more complicated circuit could, uh, could start to cause problems. So I'm definitely going to be interested to get the processor build out and start uh, taking a look at some of the lines where I suspect there are difficulties. But I need to practice on this thing a little bit more. Well, I hope you found this interesting. I've certainly uh, found it quite curious to have my first little experience playing around with this thing. I've got a suspicion you're going to see this more over the, uh, the next couple of weeks as I try and figure out how to use it and, uh, and what kind of information I can get out of it about the, uh, the processor. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.